Greetings, motherfuckers! My name is Sam, and today we're going to be diving into the wonderful world of Pokémon, a subject that the more dedicated motherfuckers will know we have already covered. But guess what? Pokémon is an ever-growing media behemoth who must be sated with regular offerings, so frankly we're due another Pokémon video, which comes with 101 brand new facts for you to metaphorically catch. You can thank Detective Pikachu. I've been so long! But how did a fish manage to play Pokémon Red and Blue? Why has Kadabra not been seen in several years? And why is it okay for Ash Ketchum to catch them all, but when I do, I have to be quarantined for three weeks? It's not on! Anyway, two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so sit down, shut up, and prepare to be facted to death with 101 facts about Pokémon! Number one. Pokémon is a Japanese media franchise built around a series of video games set in a world filled with fictional creatures known as Pokémon, which are endowed with various magical powers and abilities. The human characters catch and train said creatures to fight, because humans gonna human. The franchise began with a pair of games called Pokemon Red and Green, released outside of Japan as Pokemon Red and Blue, which were released for the Nintendo Game Boy in February of 1996. Number 2. Pokemon was created by the Japanese video game developer Game Freak, which actually began as a self-published video game magazine created by Satoshi Chijiri and Ken Sugimori in the early 80s. The magazine contained interesting video game information hints and tips on how to get high scores in games like Donkey Kong and Xevious. Number 3. In 1989, Tajiri and Sugimori established Game Freak as a video game developer, and the following year Tajiri began to formulate his ideas for the first Pokemon game, inspired by his childhood love of bug catching. Number 4. However, the development of Pokemon was not without its challenges. Nintendo passed on the idea several times before Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto encouraged Nintendo to give it a chance. Smart guy. Number 5. Since then, Pokemon has since gone on to become the highest grossing media franchise, like, ever of all time in history. In total, Pokemon has raked in a truly gargantuan $90 billion in revenue. The second most profitable media franchise is Hello Kitty with $80 billion, which was created over 20 years before Pokemon in 1974, making Pokemon's ascendancy all the sweeter. Number 6. Including the main series as well as spin-offs and arcade titles, there is currently a total of 122 Pokemon games, which is, I think scientifically, quite a lot. Number 7. In addition to the games, the entire Pokemon franchise now includes the long-running Pokemon anime television series and manga, the trading card game, the trading figurine game, music, books, toys, the anime film series, a wide range of other merchandise, and an upcoming live-action film which we'll talk about later on. Patience, my children, okay? God, I'm annoying. Number 8. As a result of its incredible success, Pokemon also represents the biggest selling toy brand. You know those things, you know, toys? Well, Pokemon's the biggest, baby. Number 9. The Pokemon franchise also includes the top-selling trading card game, with over 25.7 billion cards sold. That's enough to completely cover the entirety of the French island collectively known as Wallace and Fortuna, and still have over 3 square kilometres worth of Pokemon cards left to play with. Thanks, Google. Number 10. Yeah. The hit Pokemon anime TV series has also become the most successful video game adaptation ever, with over 20 seasons and 1,000 episodes broadcast in over 120 countries, which is actually most of them. Number 11! <laughs> Hilariously, when Pokemon was still in the process of being introduced to the Western market, localizers told Nintendo that the cute adorable creatures of the Pokemon universe would never be accepted by Americans, and suggested that the cuddly critters be substantially beefed up into the muscle-bound monsters that would apparently do better in the West. Imagine Jigglypuff, but Jigglybuff. Number 12. When Pokemon Red and Blue were released in 1998, Cerulean Cave was slightly redesigned from the Japanese versions of the games, reportedly due to concerns that the dungeon would be too difficult for Western players. <laughs> oh, shade. Number 13. The Pokemon Snorlax was based on game designer Koji Nishino, who, according to Ken Sugimori, was known for his voracious appetite. As a result, Nishino served as the model for Snorlax's design, which I imagine is both flattering and perhaps slightly a little bit insulting. Number 14. But the tribute to Nishino doesn't end there, oh no. As Nishino was known for his habit of eating just about anything, even expired and mouldy food, ugh, his co-workers named him Kabi, the Japanese word for mould. This also served as the inspiration for the Japanese name for Snorlax, which is Kabigon. Number 15. All Pokemon fans will remember Professor Oak, the wise and respected Pokemon academic who first sent you on your adventures in the first games. What you may not know was that your character was originally going to face Oak in battle, against a team of high-level Pokemon which includes a Tauros, Executor, Arcanine, Gyarados, and a Starter. This battle was ultimately removed, presumably because obliterating Professor's lame-ass granddad team would have been too easy. Number 16. 
At one point in Red and Blue, a trainer called Picnic Carol on Route 10 mentions a pink Pokemon with a floral pattern. No such Pokemon existed until the introduction of Mana in the fifth generation titles Black and White, a full four generations later. Wow, is that an easter egg with a long payoff or did they just forget? I think the second one. Number 17. In 2014, a programmer called Catherine Moresco created a system that tracked the movements of her pet beta fish in its bowl, which were then translated into Game Boy commands that allowed the fish to play Pokemon Red. The fish, named Grayson Hopper, wow, that's an upmarket name for a fish, spent hours walking around his room before he eventually managed to obtain the Charmander from Professor Oak and defeat his rival Squirtle. <laughs> wow, suck on that, Gary. Number 18. Pokemon Gold and Silver, the main games of the second generation of Pokemon, are beloved by many as some of the best games of the entire series. It may therefore shock you to know that Gold and Silver were initially intended to be the very last Pokemon games ever, as Pokemon Company CEO Tsunikazu Ishihara believed that as the 21st century arrived, there would be little desire for Pokemon games. <laughs> oh, how wrong he was. Number 19. The Mareep line of Pokemon, which were introduced in the second generation, are a group of electric Pokemon which take the form of adorable fluffy little sheep. Ah. Some have suggested that Mareep and its evolutions are in fact a reference to Philip K. Dick's celebrated science fiction novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Because they are electric sheep. The book that may I remind you also served as inspiration for the classic 1982 sci-fi movie Blade Runner. Number 20. Apparently, early versions of Gold and Silver were going to include a skateboard as an alternative means of transportation to the bicycle, which is frankly boring and unrad bro in comparison. The skateboard was, however, not included in the final version of the games, because the world isn't fair and everything is meaningless. Number 21. The sister game to Gold and Silver, titled Pokemon Crystal, was the first Pokemon game in which players could choose to play as a female trainer. Wow, women? What? There were actually plans to include a playable female trainer in Red and Blue, but the feature was sadly removed, I assume because of sexism? I, I mean, I don't know. I just don't know. Number 22. Oh, oh, I've got a new song out, probably. Pokemon Crystal was also the first Pokemon game to feature animated Pokemon sprites, which could be seen upon entering battle and checking their profile. Yeah, you've got your 3D Pokemon games now, but back in the day, those animations were all we'd ever dreamed of. Number 23. The third generation of Pokemon games commenced with the arrival of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Junichi Masuda, a Japanese Pokemon polymath known for his work as a designer, producer, director, composer, and programmer on numerous Pokemon titles, has stated that the development of Ruby and Sapphire was extremely stressful due to the new challenges of developing for the Game Boy Advance and a perceived decline in the popularity of Pokemon. Masuda admitted he even experienced nightmares in which the game failed upon launch and even suffered stomach pain due to the stress, which required a visit to the hospital. So yeah, you're enjoying that. He really suffered for it. Number 24. Ruby and Sapphire are the only entries in the entire Pokemon series which include an appearance from the player's father as well as their mother. In the games, your father is a gym leader called Norman, whom the player must defeat in order to obtain the balance badge. Number 25. Ruby and Sapphire features a non-playable character called Kiri, a young girl living in the very annoyingly laid out city of Sutopolis, who gives the player two berries a day upon talking to her. Junichi Masuda secretly added Kiri to the game as a tribute to his daughter, who was born just before the games were released in Japan. And I assume the daughter gives him two berries a day? It's good from such a young age, I suppose. Number 26. In Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, the first remakes in the main series of Pokemon games, gamblers had their title changed to gamers, as Nintendo wanted to avoid references to gambling. This is despite the fact that the Celadon City Game Corner contains playable slot machines, but for some reason was left completely intact. Number 27. In the first generation of Pokemon games, the plaque accompanying the Space Shuttle model in the Pewter City Museum reads, Space Shuttle Columbia. In Fire Red and Leaf Green, however, the caption was changed simply to Space Shuttle, as the real Space Shuttle Columbia disintegrated upon re-entry on the 1st of February 2003 during its 28th mission, killing all seven crew members. However, the caption remains unchanged in the Japanese versions of the games. Number 28. Pokemon Black and White is set in the region of Anova, which is based on the US state of New York and New Jersey. This makes Black and White the first main series Pokemon games to feature a region not based on areas of Japan. Number 29. Pokemon X and Y featured a wide range of firsts for Pokemon games. Not only were X and Y the first Pokemon games not to be named after a color or precious metal, they were also the first to feature 3D graphics, and the very first Pokemon game to receive a simultaneous worldwide release. Number 30. There is a preschooler named Mia in Pokemon X and Y located on Route 4, who before battling you says, Hey, hey, listen! This is a reference to Navi, Link's fairy companion from the Legend of Zelda series, who is also a massive attention seeker. Number 31. There's also a Dragon Ball Z reference in Pokemon X and Y, which appears when a psychic named Robert on Route 10 says, Wow, you and your Pokemon's power levels are incredible. They're over 9,000 for sure. 
This reference is only really a thing because of the popular meme associated with the lines. So you can thank the internet for that one. Congrats, internet. Have yourself some internet points. Number 32. When the 17-year-old gorilla Harambe was shot and killed after a toddler climbed into its enclosure, RIP, many people who were upset by the circumstances of his death appealed to have Harambe commemorated at a Pokemon, with one such online petition gaining almost 125,000 signatures. When the Pokemon Orangaru was revealed, many thought it was based on Harambe, although the Pokemon company has denied this. Number 33. At one point early on in Pokemon Sun and Moon, the lovable yet profoundly odd Professor Kukui is shown to explain the words, My body is ready when collecting research with his Rockruff. This is a humorous nod to former president of Nintendo America and online celebrity Reggie fils who somewhat awkwardly stated, My body is ready during an appearance at the E3 conference in 2007, quickly becoming a classic online meme. Number 34. There is a woman in the Haoli City Mall who jokes that there is no hidden switch underneath one of the posters. This is a charming reference to the Rocket Game Corner in the Kanto region from Red and Blue, in which the player could enter Team Rocket's secret hideout by flicking a secret switch hidden behind a poster. Did you catch this reference first time round, or are you a cheeky little liar? Let us know in our Pokerific YouTube poll. Number 35. When Nintendo released Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire for the 3DS in 2014, IGN gave the game a fairly positive review and scored it 7.8 out of 10. However, the review also included a minor criticism that the game apparently included too much water. If that sounds hypercritical and overly pedantic, Game Freak appears to agree, and demonstrated as much by including a comment in their Pokefinder in Pokemon Sun and Moon, which reads 7.8 out of 10 too much water, followed by a very sarcastic shrugging emoticon. This guy, in fact. Number 36. Aside from the core Pokemon games, there's also a dizzying array of Pokemon spin-offs to delight and enthrall you. Many early Pokemon fans will have fond memories of playing the popular spin-off game Pokemon Snap, in which players engage in the leisurely pastime of Pokemon photography. Interestingly, the game wasn't planned as a Pokemon game at all, but began life as a non-Pokemon game called Jack and the Beanstalk. The adorable superpower creatures weren't added until later on in the game's development, after the first Pokemon games emerged as a surprise hit for Nintendo. Number 37. If you knock Magikarp into the waterfall during the valley level in Pokemon Snap, it will evolve into a fearsome Gyarados, which angrily roars as it thrashes around in the cascade of water. This is actually a subtle reference to the origins of both Magikarp and Gyarados, which are based on an ancient Chinese myth. The legend states that the carp which managed to swim up a waterfall on a mythical mountain would transform into powerful dragons, as a reward for their determination and strength in the face of great adversity. Number 38. Another spin-off game released during Pokemon's first generation was Hey You Pikachu, a virtual pet game developed by Umbrella Games which allowed players to utilise the Nintendo 64's voice recognition unit to speak to Pikachu. The game included a snarky little easter egg too, whereby Pikachu would immediately become enraged and aim electric attacks at you if they said the word PlayStation into the microphone. It's what an incorrect person would say! This is actually a complete myth, it's not real at all, although Pikachu does react angrily if players call it an electric rat. I don't know, I think that sounds pretty cool. Number 39. At one point in Pokemon Colosseum, you battle an imposter called Fane, who's been running around causing mayhem disguised as the player character Wes. Before the battle, Fane says the line, You are me and I am you and we are all together here, which is a reference to a similar line from the song I am the Walrus, released in 1967 by the Beatles. Number 40. When the player first interacts with Swanner in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity, she says, You can call me Swanner if you want, just don't call me maybe. A really quite incongruous and not very clear reference to the song Call Me Maybe by Canadian pop icon Carly Rae Jepsen. Number 41. In 2010, British graphic designer and Game Freak employee James Turner became the first Westerner to officially design Pokemon. Turner since designed seven Pokemon for Pokemon Black and White, two for Pokemon X and Y, and two for Pokemon Sun and Moon. Though he's primarily known, or perhaps blamed, for designing the adorable yet obviously ridiculous Vanillite evolutionary line, his designs have generally been much creepier, having designed Pokemon like Mandibars and Trevenant. The meaning of life. All the types to which Psychic-type Pokemon are weak, specifically Bug, Ghost, and Dark-type, are all common fears. Many people report being scared of creepy crawly spirits and darkness, and for whatever reason, Psychic Pokemon appear to be especially in line with these impulses. Luckily, there isn't a Pokemon who specialises in public speaking. Number 43. One of the most interesting types is that of the shadowy Ghost Pokemon, which excel defensively with two resistances against Bug and Poison, while also being completely immune to normal and fighting types. No other type boasts more than one immunity, and since one of Ghost's weaknesses is Ghost itself, few Pokemon can effectively exploit the shortcomings of Ghost Pokemon without exposing themselves as well. Number 44. Canonically, Slowbro evolves from a Slowpoke when a Shelder bites onto its tail. Numerous Pokedex entries state that if a Slowbro somehow loses its Shelder, however, it will devolve back into a Slowpoke. 
Of all the Pokemon species, Slowbro is the only one that can actually devolve. Number 45. The Pokemon move Splash, well known for being absolutely bloody useless, is usable by certain non-aquatic Pokemon simply due to a vague translation. The Japanese word for Splash can also mean Hop, which is why Pokemon like Spoink, which have no association with water at all, can still use it. Number 46. Despite the fact there are dozens of gym leaders across all the main series games, there has not yet been a single leader who specialises in dark type Pokemon, while the other 17 types have had at least one gym dedicated to them. That being said, three Elite Four members, Karen, Sydney, and Grimsley, as well as the Island of Kahuna Nanu, are all dark type specialists. Number 47. In the original Pokemon manga series, Clefairy was the principal mascot for the Pokemon brand. However, when the franchise was adopted from the video game to anime, the producers decided they wanted Pikachu to be the face of Pokemon. Sadly, Clefairy was fired and forced to return to his previous job as an estate agent. Number 48. Most hardcore Pokemon fans will be aware of the sneaky inclusion of Spanish numbers in the games for the three legendary birds of Kanto from the first generation, as well as the more obvious names of Doduo and Dodrio. However, there are even more numbered Pokemon names, in the form of Dino, Zuilus, and Hydreigon, which each include the words Ein, Zwei, and Dry, the German words for 1, 2, and 3. Number 49. Seasoned Pokemon fans will also be aware that the names of the Pokemon Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee are obvious references to famed martial artist Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee. What you may not know is that the Japanese names for these scrappy dudes are Ebiwala and Sawamula, which are references to the Japanese kickboxer Tadashi Sawamura and Japanese boxing champion Hiroyuki Ebihara. Number 50. But the famous fighter references do not end there. Hitmonchan's name in French is Tignon, a combination of Mike Tyson's surname and Nyon, the French word for bash or wallop. The character's name in Korean is Hong Soo Mon, a reference to Hong Soo Hwan, a famous Korean boxer. The Korean name for Hitmonlee is Sirosomon, a reference to Sirosoni, the nickname of Yi Sung Sun, who was, in fact, according to Google, a famed Korean street knight. Ooh, sounds fancy. Number 51. The so called diapered Pokemon Vullaby, designed by aforementioned British artist James Turner, is labelled as a dark type Pokemon in the Pokedex. This may have something to do with the fact that Vullaby appears to be wearing a human skull as underwear. <laughs> been there, buddy, been there. Number 52. Pikachu and Meowth are coded as oppositional in a variety of ways throughout the Pokemon franchise. Not only are the pair clearly positioned on opposite sides in the anime, their conflict can also be seen in the animals they are inspired by, as cats and mice are traditional enemies in popular culture. As if that wasn't enough, their respective Pokedex numbers are 25 and 52, which are exact opposites. Number 53. It probably isn't too surprising that many beloved Pokemon are actually not known by their original names. In the beta version of Red and Blue, the original name of the muscle-bound Pokemon Machamp was Judo. You know, like Judo, the Japanese martial art. Number 54. Similarly, the reportedly very tasty Pokemon Slowpoke was originally going to be called Slow-Mo. Eh, that would have been fine, there are worse names. Looking at you, nose pass. Number 55. Beedrill was originally only going to be spelled with one L. Good grief, dodge a bullet there, guys. God. Number 56. Oddish and Kabutops are the only two Pokemon known to have scientific names. Oddish is also known as Oddium Wanderous, a detail included in its Fire Red and Y Pokedex entries, and Kabutops is known as Kabutops Maximus. Dramatic, I know. Number 57. Despite being a clone of Mew, Mewtwo actually appears before Mew in the Pokedex. Frankly, I find that disgusting. We British, after all, detest Q jumpers. <laughs> Unbelievable. Number 58. The insult continues because Mew is the only Pokemon of the first 151 not to be included in the original version of the Poker Rap. Good evening, class! Haters gonna hate Mew, keep doing your thing, you genderless little scamp. Number 59. A current Nintendo console can be found in the player's bedroom in every single one of the main Pokemon games to date. Apparently, the player character was bored of making video games and figured he'd rather go outside and make animals fight each other. Number 60. There's a theory that, fairly recently before the games, the world of Pokemon was engaged in a massive war. This theory is bolstered by the distinct lack of fathers in the games, as well as that many adult male characters are police officers or members of the military, and statements made by the first generation gym leader Lieutenant Surge, who states that electric Pokemon saved him during the war. Coincidence? I don't know, maybe. I could be true, I guess. Number 61. The Pokedex entries for Raichu and Ghastly in Fire Red both state that each Pokemon has the ability to easily knock out an Indian elephant, which constitutes a rare in-game mention of an actual real-life animal. It's also oddly specific and needlessly violent. Number 62. Several of Wobbuffet's various Pokedex entries in the main series of games seem to imply that what appears to be its body is in fact a decoy, and that the small black tail with two eyes is Wobbuffet's body. Number 63. 
Similarly, it's been speculated that the happy faces on Vanalite, Vanalish, and Vanalux are also decoys too, and that it's actually the ice crystals located next to these possibly false faces that are actually their real facial features. Nintendo 64! <laughs> Get it? Because Pokemon. The Pokemon Metagross appears to have been heavily inspired by, of all things, the number 12. It has 12 metallic toes, and the X on its face has 12 sides. In addition, the character's name contains the word gross, which means 144, the square root of which is 12. It also weighs 1,212.5 pounds, and 0.5 written as a fraction is, you guessed it, 1 over 2. Mind blown. Number 65. The psychic-type mythical bad boy Deoxys was the first Pokemon to have its own unique battle music. She's such a drama queen. Always gotta be the centre of attention. Just waiting for Chris here to make a joke about me. Number 66. Yeah. One of the most interesting Pokemon, at least in this boy's opinion, is Rotom, an electric and ghost type known for its ability to take the form of various domestic appliances. In case you had noticed, the name Rotom is literally just the word motor spelt backwards. I've known that for ages and definitely did not just find that out while this video was being researched. I'm very smart, you see. Number 67. Interestingly, the design of the Pokemon Rotom appears to have been inspired by Pulse Man, the lead character of an eponymously named platformer made for the Sega Genesis, which was released by Game Freak in 1994. Number 68. When Rotom is encountered in the old chateau in Diamond, Pearl and Platinum, the music that plays when entering the battle is the same music heard during the legendary encounters, despite the fact that Rotom is not classified as legendary. Rotom appears to be the only non-legendary Pokemon with which this happens. Number 69. Rotom Boat. There is no other Pokemon with the same type combination as Giratina. As a ghost and dragon type Pokemon, Giratina is also the only dual type Pokemon that is weak to both of its own types. Number 70, yeah. The Pokemon Kabuto is named after a helmet which was commonly worn by the samurai of medieval and early modern Japan. The word Kabuto itself comes from the Japanese word for horseshoe crab, which is basically what Kabuto is, really. Number 71. At 5 foot 7, Empoleon is roughly the same height as its namesake, Napoleon D not Dynamite, Bonaparte. Damn, these references be getting subtle as hell, y'all! I'm sorry, I was trying something out there and it didn't work, did it? Number 72. Despite being called Lickitung, having the category name of Licking Pokemon, having a first generation Pokedex entry that states leaves a tingling sensation when it licks enemies, and the fact it's basically just a massive tongue, Lickitung couldn't actually learn the move Lick until generation 2. If it were currently 2007, I would call that an epic fail, yo. Number 73. In the year 2000, Israeli magician and self-appointed Brexit scupper Yuri Geller sued Nintendo for millions of dollars, based on the claim that the Pokemon Kadabra was a parody of him. He stated that the design of Kadabra's face was also based on his own. <laughs> Self-burn, those are rare. And that the Pokemon spoons are a clear reference to his signature spoon-bending shenanigans. In fairness, Kadabra's Japanese name is Yungura, a fairly obvious corruption of Yuri Geller, which is bolstered by the fact that the Japanese names for Abra and Alakazam are also references to famous magicians and psychics. Number 74. Where Geller's somewhat reasonable claim veers considerably off the rails is his assertion that the star and zigzag markings seen on Kadabra's head and body are references to the Nazis, which served to depict him as an evil occult Pokemon character. This symbol wasn't commonly used by them and predates the rise of fascism by several thousand years, and while the three zigzag lines on Kadabra's body may superficially resemble the jagged SS symbols, they are actually inspired by Xena cards, which are used to conduct experiments into extrasensory perception. Number 75. Regardless, Geller's action against Nintendo is, as a publication of this video, still ongoing, almost 20 years later. As a result, Nintendo have omitted Kadabra from the official Pokemon trading card game since 2003, and the character has made no significant anime appearances since Fear Factor Phony aired in the United States in 2006, and did not appear in Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Elmia, while both Abra and Alakazam did. So, thanks a lot, Geller. Number 76. When Pokemon was at the peak of its popularity in the United States, Kellogg's teamed up with Pokemon to create a range of limited edition Eggo Waffles and Pop-Tarts, featuring some first and second generation favourites such as Gengar, Maril, Charmander, Elekid, Chauncey, and of course, the attention-seeking electric rat that is Pikachu. Number 77. At the end of Pokemon, I Choose You, the very first episode of the Pokemon anime, which was first broadcast in Japan in 1997, Ash sees the legendary Pokemon Ho-Oh flying through the sky, two whole years before it appeared in Gold and Silver in the second generation. Number 78. When the Pokemon anime was being exported to North America, producers were worried that some of the more typically Japanese elements of the show wouldn't translate well for Western audiences, so a number of changes were made. For instance, there is a moment in the 25th episode of the show, entitled Primate Goes Bananas, when Rock refers to rice balls as jelly-filled donuts, despite the fact that they are clearly not donuts, let alone filled with jelly. Number 79. 
The concept for the insanely popular GPS-based augmented reality game Pokemon Go began as a Pokemon-themed April Fool's joke by Google, which had users attempt to catch Pokemon on Google Maps. Realising that this was actually a very good idea for something that could make them a metric fudge ton of money, the Pokemon company joined forces with the American software development team Niantic to turn their harebrained scheme into a reality. Number 80. And make a metric fudge ton of money it did. As of February 2019, Pokemon Go has crossed 1 billion global downloads and as of December 2018, has raked in over $3 billion in worldwide revenue. That's a lot of money which could be spent on a truly irresponsible amount of chicken nuggets. Number 81. Pokemon continued the 7th generation with Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, which are enhanced remakes of Pokemon Yellow. Junichi Masuda has stated that Eevee was chosen as a game mascot alongside Pikachu for Pokemon Let's Go because Eevee appears in so much Pokemon fan art. Number 82. Masuda has also revealed at one point Psyduck was considered for the role instead of Eevee, but the psychic headachey boy was ultimately not chosen because he's the same colour as Pikachu. Racism. Number 83. On the 27th of February 2019, it was announced that the primary paired games on the approaching 8th generation of Pokemon would be titled Sword and Shield, which would be released on the Nintendo Switch in late 2019. Huzzah! Number 84. Pokemon Sword and Shield are to be set in the Galar region, which is thought to be based on everyone's favourite island that has Wales in it, Great Britain. Though this hasn't been explicitly confirmed by Nintendo, the inclusion of a familiar looking tower and a distinctive example of hillside chalk art in the trailer are frankly all the evidence we Brits need. Number 85. Galar is the first core series region in the history of Pokemon not to feature the letter O in its English name. Truly groundbreaking stuff. I mean, it's what you come to this channel for, isn't it? Number 86. Of course, we can't talk about the wonderful world of Pokemon without talking about the films. The first of which was the appropriately titled Pokemon the First Movie Mewtwo Strikes Back. While viewers of the English language version of the film will remember Mewtwo as a vengeful killer, the original Japanese story presented Mewtwo in a far more sympathetic light, anguished by the circumstances of his origins. This change was apparently prompted by Warner Brothers who felt there needed to be a clearer distinction between the heroes and the villain. Number 87. At one point in the film, Brock states that he didn't know Vikings still existed, to which Ash kind of confusingly responds they mostly live in Minnesota. This is a sly reference to the Minnesota Vikings football team, who I'm sure are a good team that plays great sports and are a well-respected and very good team. Number 88. The soundtrack of Pokemon the first movie features a surprisingly star-studded list of artists, including the likes of Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears and Nasink. The album also contains a number of classic British and Irish pop stars from the 90s too, such as Bewitched and Emma Bunton. One of the songs, entitled Making My Way, was sung by none other than Billy Piper, who Americans will remember as Rose on Doctor Who, while Brits will have slightly earlier memories of her dancing through a council estate, turning Bins into T-1000 to marrying Chris Evans. No, the other Chris Evans. Number 89. Of course one of the most hotly anticipated Pokemon themed entities zooming towards us at an unstoppable pace is Pokemon Detective Pikachu, an upcoming 2019 science fiction action comedy mystery film based on the 2016 video game Detective Pikachu. Oh yeah, there was a game called Detective Pikachu, it's overrated. Number 90. Pokemon Detective Pikachu represents a separate continuity from the mainline video games and anime series, and follows the story of Tim Goodman, a 21 year old living in the sprawling metropolis of Rhyme City who sets out to find his father, a renowned detective who has mysteriously disappeared. In pursuit of answers regarding his missing parent, Tim teams up with his father's former partner, a wisecracking Pikachu whom only he can understand. Number 91. Detective Pikachu constitutes the very first live action film in the Pokemon franchise. All the other films are anime cartoons, which has generally been the preferred medium due to Pokemon not being real. Sorry to break it to you. Number 92. The film stars the incomparable Ryan Reynolds as the voice and facial motion capture of Detective Pikachu. As if you needed more of a reason to go see this film, the title character is being played from the guy from The Proposal. Cannot wait. Number 93. As the Pikachu from the original game speaks with a deep, raspy American drawl, there was a considerable swell of public support for casting Danny DeVito in the title role. Before casting Reynolds in the role, the creative team behind the film actually tested DeVito's voice for the role, using audio from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia for the role, in which the veteran actor for the role portrays an unkempt, amoral slob Frank Reynolds for the role. For the role. Number 94. Still, a range of other actors were also considered for peaks, including Dwayne The Rock Johnson, what, what really? Mark The Stone Wahlberg, and Hugh The Pebble Jackman. Yeah. Number 95. The character of Tim Goodman is portrayed by American actor Justice Smith. That's a, such a great name. Who was the first person to be confirmed as part of the movie. Interestingly, Smith appeared as Marcus Radar Lincoln in the 2015 comedy drama Paper Towns, in which he sang the Pokemon theme song in a scene alongside Nat Wolf and Austin Abrams. Number 96. 
In addition to Reynolds and Smith, which incidentally sounds like the name of a glove shop from the late 1800s, Pokemon Pikachu Detective will also star Catherine Newton, Suki Waterhouse, Omar Shapiro, Chris Gear, Ken Watanabe, Rob Delaney, Rita Ora, why? And Bill Nye in various live action roles. Jennifer Lawrence is notably absent, which makes me sad. Number 97. You wanna know who else is gonna be in Pokemon Pikachu Detective Detective Pikachu Pokemon Pokemon? Karan Sony. You wanna know who that guy is? He's the guy who plays Dupinder in Deadpool, which also starred the guy from The Proposal. Oh, and Rob Delaney was in both films too. <laughs> Small world. Number 98. Audio for large crowd chants that will be heard in the film were recorded during the 2018 Pokemon World Championships in Nashville, presumably added to capture some genuine nerd flavor. Number 99. The realistic live action depictions of the Pokemon seen in the film were based on artwork by RJ Palmer, who was discovered by the movie's production designer while he was looking for realistic Pokemon designs online. The filmmakers were so impressed by Palmer's artwork they gave him a job as a concept artist for the movie. Number 100! Gotta catch them all! <laughs> what am I doing? Rated PG by the MPAA, Pikachu Detective is the first Pokemon film not to receive a G rating. It's gonna be mildly violent guys with some language. After all, Pikachu does say hell in the trailer. Just a heads up. What kind of fact 101 are you? Well, yeah. Amazingly, pre-production on a sequel to Detective Pikachu Pikachu Detective is already well underway and began before the first film was even finished. The sequel is being penned by writer and producer Oren Azeel, known for his work on films like The Cloverfield Paradox and 22 Jump Street, and has also scripted the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog film. Gotta go fast, gotta go fast. So that was 101 Facts About Pokemon Part 2. Are there any we've missed? It's a big Pokemon world after all. And who's your favourite Pokemon? I know it's an age-old question, but I just want to know. Let me know in the comments down below. Go on, tap it out and out right now. Go on. Also, give this video a like and subscribe to 101 Facts if you haven't done so already, because both of those things really do help us out. You can also help by letting us know what you want to see next. In the meantime, though, oh, look at these two videos. Oh my god, what specimens they are. Why not click on one right now and see how right I am? And I'll see you next time.